Hello. Hello, Daisy. Can you hear me? Hello. Good evening. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, perfect. So, well, I thought it was going to be only the two of us, but it looks like we're getting more people connected. That's good. Welcome. Well, I'm expecting more people. I will give like one more minute before we start with today's class. So let me just... Okay, let me, I'm just copying and pasting something that we are going to be using for today's class. So while we wait for the others to connect, I will start typing this on the chat. So let's see. Okay, I see more people connecting.
All right, so I see the more people is connecting. That's good. So let me just finish copy and pasting this sentences in here. So as you guys might remember, yesterday we saw some things related to conjunctions in uh, time clauses. So that's pretty much what we saw yesterday. So today, we're, before we start with today's class, which is going to be more about uh, practicing and pronunciating things, more vocabulary to learn today, we are going to um, <clears throat> we're going to have a little practice before we we start doing that. So that's really weird that we only have five people. That's weird. Okay, let me see. Okay. All right, so I'm going to send to you guys through the, oh, that's weird. Can you see what I send you on the meeting chat? Can you see the three uh, sentences in there? Because it looks like they went more. Good evening, teacher, yes. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I can see that there's like more messages, but that was not me, that's weird. What is this? Okay. Well, okay, so we have three. Uh, what happened? I don't know what is this. That's really weird. I really don't know what's going on, but I can see like more messages or blank spaces. Yeah, there are blank spaces. That's weird. Well, anyway. All right. So as you can see there on the on the chat, on the meeting chat, we have three sentences which are related to what we saw yesterday. Yesterday, we saw things about conjunctions, as you might remember, related to time clauses. Now, uh, in this practice, what we are going to do is that we will try to find the best answer possible all together. Well, in this case, let's say individually, that's pretty much what we are going to do. So, uh, I will try to share some of the uh, subordinating conjunctions that we saw yesterday. And based on that, I will want you to start working on them. So let me just share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, teacher. Okay, perfect. So, uh, as you see the three uh, sentences that we have on the chat, so I want you to start working on those based on any of this. And later on, we are going to have a little discussion about them all, okay? Is it understandable what I just said? Did you guys understand? Yes, in my case, yes. Okay, perfect. So I hope the others understood what I said. If you have not understood, please let me know so I can explain you once again. No? Okay. So let's start working on that, please. You will have, let's say, we have uh, 8.07. So we'll have, you will have exactly five minutes to complete it. Do it in your, in your notebook, do it in your phone or whatever you're using. It's not necessary for you to send me any proof, but I will ask you, and every one of you, I will ask you. So I really need you to work on that. Okay, so you have five minutes that will run from now. So you have five minutes to start working those three um, sentences that we have. 
in the little dashes that we have or the blank spaces that you can see there is where you will have to add, in this case, a subordinating conjunction. Any of the ones that I have in here, any of them. So your job is going to be to select the best answer possible. That's pretty much it. Teacher. Yep. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Excuse me. Uh, what is the instruction? Oh, we have we have three sentences on the meeting chat. Oh, I want okay. I want you to start working on those three sentences, which are related to what we saw yesterday. I only want you to add a subordinating conjunction from this little chart, any of them. But I want you to select the best answer possible. After that, you will have five minutes. I will ask every one of you, because I'm pretty sure that everyone will have a different opinion. Teacher, but this one isn't the exercise we did last night. No, those are completely different. I mean, they are not the same, but they are similar. That's that's what I'm trying to say. They are similar. They are pretty much about the same topic, but they yes, are sir. different sentences. In the, in the chat of WhatsApp. No, the, the, the sentences are on the meeting chat here, on the meeting chat. So what I, what I want you to do is only work by yourself. It's not necessary for you to send me any proof. It's not necessary, okay. but I will ask you late after the five minutes. Okay, Tisha. Okay. Thank you. Five minutes. Time is running now. Let me know if you have any question or you do not understand something, okay? Um, Daisy, it's not necessary um, to write it down. It's not necessary. Just write it on the on your notebook or write it on a piece of paper or in a computer if you're using a computer. And I will ask every one of you later on. So it's not necessary to write it. But, that, but that's a good example, though. Thank you. Patricia, um, what are you exactly doing? I play tennis after the go to a school. Uh, okay, but looks like you didn't quite understood my my instructions. So the instructions are, las instrucciones son, chicos, de las tres oraciones que tenemos en el chat, en, en el chat de la videollamada, esas son las que tenemos que trabajar. Those are the ones that we have to work. Solamente lo que vamos a hacer es agregar add cualquiera de estas, pero la que usted considere es la mejor que se le podemos agregar a cada uno. That's it. Okay, teacher. Mm -hmm. It's not necessary for you to, uh, to, you know, to send it here. 
escribirle acá no es necesario, pero sí les voy a preguntar a todos. Because I'm pretty sure everyone will have a different opinion. So that's, that's pretty much it. Okay, five minutes are over. We had enough time already. It's 8.15, so we are going to start with the first one. And in this case, I will ask arriving. Arriving, you are the first one. I'm sorry. So let's go with the first one. What do you think is the best answer possible for the first sentence? I need you to read it all, and then you explain to me what you think is the best answer, the one you choose. Okay, the sentence, uh, good evening, every, good evening. everybody. Uh, the sentence says, I will pay you a visit only if you promise to be nice. I think is the, the, the best option is if. If, okay. Now let me see uh, Navia. Navia, what do you think about number one? What's the option that you have selected on that one? It's similar in my case. I, in my opinion, is is if the option. I can read the sentence number two. Okay, let's see what you have on number two. Uh, in my case, in my opinion, is while we both speak the same language, we do not seem to understand each other. Okay, okay, that's a good option. You said while. Okay, uh, let's see, Janita, what do you think, do you agree with what, uh, with what Arriving said about number one? Or do you agree with what uh, Nadia said about number two? Or do you have a different opinion? Um, with Arriving, I am agree. Uh -huh. uh, but the another ones I didn't finish. You didn't finish. Okay, let me tell you something, Janira. When we want to say estoy de acuerdo, we never use the verb to be. We only use I, I, ag agree. I agree. Exactly. Do never say the verb to be, otherwise it will be incorrect. Okay, just, okay. just for you. Thank to know. you teacher. Yeah, you're very welcome. Let now, me let me at the end, please. Okay, no problem. Let's see. Um Philomena. What do you think, Philomena? Do you agree with what arriving said on number one? Or do you have a different opinion for number two as well? What do you think? Well, I don't know if I am okay, teacher, but in the number one, I write. I write I, or I, I wrote? I wrote. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I wrote. I will pay you a visit only, only you promise to be nice. Okay. Okay. In that's... Number two, mm -hmm. I write. Um, you write or you grow? I grow. I grow. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I grow. I grow. Uh, alto, alto. Although, okay, Although, that's a, okay. That's a good option. Yeah. Thank and you very number much. Three, uh, only... Yeah, th those are the only ones. For number three, I will ask. Uh, let's see, Patricia. Okay. Patricia, and then Sonia. 
What do you have, uh, Patricia, on number three? Or do you agree with, uh, let's say in this case, Nadia and Philomena's response? Or do you think that that's completely different? I agree with Philomena, teacher. And number two? Number, no, sorry. Number two for me is before. Before, okay. And number one is if. If, okay. And what about number three? What do you have on that? I don't know, but for me it's when, whenever. Whenever, okay. That's a good option then. Thank you very much okay. for that. Now, Sonia, what do you think about number three? Sonia Araceli. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Okay. What's so your opinion? In my opinion, the number three is... Mm -hmm. I don't know if you said something, but I couldn't hear you. And now, and after Sonia, I will ask you, Arturo, and let's see, Alejandro as well, and then Wendy. <laughs> Don't worry, we're not going to kill you here. <laughs> oh, teacher, I'm sorry, I, I, I. I connect in a few moments and a few um, a few moments. What do you mean? Yeah, um, a few, a few. You mean some minutes ago? Yeah, no, no, um, around five minutes ago, and Last. and I am I'm seeing mm -hmm. the sentences, but. I don't know if it's similar to the homeworks. Yeah, that's pretty similar. So, Sonia, you haven't said anything yet. What about number three? Maybe I'll talk. I'm, I'm sorry, what was that? Maybe I'll talk. I'll talk. I don't, I don't understand. You mean although? Although. Although, I'm sorry, although, although, please, guys, pronunciation. I don't want you to fail on the pronunciation on Thursday, okay? Now, let's go with Alejandro. Any idea, Alejandro? No, teacher, I'm sorry. Not at all. No, yes, teacher, I don't know. Okay, all righty. Let's see, Wendy, any idea? Um, good afternoon, teacher. Uh, I'm not pretty sure what are we doing because I get connected a few minutes ago, so... You get or you I got? Know. I got connected, so... Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Okay, that's okay. Alrighty, now, let's see. Let me show you. Uh, let me stop sharing this part in here, and I will start sharing the whiteboard so this is what we have let me just copy and paste it so I uh, will be able you will be able to see it all now let's see this is what we have okay this is what we have number one I will pay you all a visit only What's the answer? If. if Only if. if. Correct. If. Why? Because we're saying, if we, if we translate this in Spanish, how will that be? Te pagaré una visita solo si promete ser amable. I think. Nice. No, pero no es. Mm-hmm. Okay, in this case, even though, 
it says visit and we already know that visit is visitar, right? So in this case, it's like te pagare, un viaje, something like that, okay? Mm -hmm. It's not literal visit. Unicamente si promete ser what? What's nice? Oh bueno. my lord. Okay. Okay. Bueno. Yeah, okay. Now number two. We both is, what what's the answer? I think it's although. It can be although, even though. I agree. Yeah, so even we can though, have both. Even though. Although or even though we both speak the same language. We do not seem to understand each other. That happens here. You see, even though we both speak the same language, we do not seem to understand each other sometimes. What do we understand if we say something like that? If we translate that. Today, we are going to practice translation. And I will see if you're able to translate in a good way or if you still miss some things in there. So if we want to translate that to Spanish, we both, although, or even though, we both speak the same language, we do not seem to understand each other. What's that? Aunque ambos hablamos el mismo lenguaje, parece que no nos entendemos el uno al otro. I think. Someone else? Aunque ambos hablamos el mismo idioma. Okay, that's another okay. option as well. No, no pareciera que nos entendemos. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Now, number three, they were waiting until. What do you guys think, the others? I agree, teacher. Until, that's correct. They were wearing, waiting, I'm sorry, until they joined them, okay? Now, uh, today, let me just stop sharing here. And today, uh, guys, class is going to be related to uh, vocabulary. So today, we're going to focus a little bit more on pronunciation, which is the main part. And the part where every one of you is having a lot of trouble in here. Okay, so today's class, guys, is going to be dedicated to similar phrases or phrases related to sleep. So, but before we start with that, let me ask you, do you guys know how do we say hablando del diablo? Any idea? Just literal. No. Speaking of the devil. <laughs> but you know what? That's how we say it in English. Speak of the devil. Another one. How do we say la gota que derramó, la última gota que derramó el vaso? Do you know how do we say that? Any idea? Sorry, no. teacher, uh, about the no. first one is like literal. Yeah, Speaking that's the devil. Yeah, for example, in this situation, let's say that you and I are talking and all of a sudden Alejandro is coming in and we say, oh, speaking of the devil. You see, it's oh, like, okay. oh, like literal, like, like the same meaning in Spanish, hablando del diablo. Hablando del diablo y el que aparece. That's the same thing that, that, that we use. No, no, you. it's just an example, Alejandro. That's just an example. All right. Okay, let me uh, share with you the way we say mm -hmm. la gota o la última gota que derramó el vaso. That's an idiom. So we say... That's my last what? Straw. Straw. Okay, straw. But I don't know the meaning. <laughs> Do you don't know what straw is? No. What's straw? Does any one of you knows 
what straw is? Like just the little word straw? What's that? Nobody. Oh my Lord. Bahia? So I will start I will start Bahia. praying today. Lord Bahia. Jesus, please give you uh, uh, they they mean um popote or pahia. That's pretty much it. Pahia. That's pretty much it. Pahia. That's what we're talking about. So when you're saying give me a straw, or when you go to the store and you want to say, Oh, do you have a straw? Or can you give me a straw? So I want everyone to say that phrase. Please go ahead and we're going to start with Wendy. Go ahead, Wendy. <clears throat> That's my last straw. Straw. Okay, good. Straw. Now we go with Philomena. Hello, Philomena. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, That's my last straw. 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 straw no we don't we don't say the letter w we uh, don't we never straw. we yeah like that straw yeah, with the w straw straw like that exactly okay Re that's my last straw my last straw my last straw that's oh. my last straw Okay, that's a little tricky in there a little tricky <laughs> but I think that you can do it thank you very much Janita can you try yes that's my last my last straw mm. that's, that's my last straw that was better that was way better okay now let's go with nadia that's my last straw 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 mm. rosemary um, let's go ahead Arturo. Uh, in this case, we can we can um, we can join um, the last and straw. Last, last straw? straw, last straw. That's correct. Yeah, we can join them. That's that's really good. That's my last straw. Yeah, that's a that's a good tip for a better pronunciation. Rosemary, let me listen to you, Rosemary. Good evening. Good evening. That's my last straw. That was good. Alejandro, let's go with you, Alejandro. Let me listen to you. That's my, uh, <laughs> that's my last straw. Say this one again. Straw. Mm, Alejandro, okay. Arabin, let's go with you, Arabin. That's my last straw. Looks like he's not in there. That, oh. No, I'm here, teacher. Okay. That's my last straw. My last straw. Okay, now Maritza. That's my last straw. My last straw. Okay, Iris. That's good evening. That's my last straw. My last straw. Okay, that's good. Someone else would like to make the pronunciation? A volunteer? Me teacher. Me again. Okay, so we go with Sonia, then we go with Nadia, then we go with Cesar, and we finish with Filomena. Go ahead. That's my last straw. Okay, that letter E there, a straw. No, we don't say a straw. We say straw. My last straw. My last straw. That that was way better. Okay, thank you very much. Um, that's my. That's my last straw. That's good. But do not forget that we do not pronunciate the letter W. We do not pronunciate it. But that was good. Cesar. That's my last straw. My last straw. That's good. And Filomena. That's my last straw. My last straw. Okay, good. Now, let me stop sharing this. And now, let me ask sure. you guys. Yeah, go ahead. Just a question. Mm -hmm. uh, the way the Americans use that expression is the same that we have in Spanish. It's like a negative uh, sentence. Not a negative sentence, but a negative sense. I don't know if uh -huh. you... A negative yeah. sense. A negative sense, yeah. It's Why? It's the same. 
Yeah, it's pretty much the same. For example, it's like uh, you're having a difficult situation and after all that, you have another situation coming in. And then you said, oh my God, you know what? That's my last straw. La gota que derramó el vaso. You see? And yes. if, if we try to translate that literally, does not make sense at all. Because if you say that is, ese es mi última pajilla, right? That's what that's what we should uh that's what we should have understood, like if we translate it literally. But we're not saying that, okay? So keep that in mind. So those little phrases are going to help you out. You know, to for example, if you listen uh or if you're watching TV or watching a series or something like that. Those expressions are very common, like in those type of uh, things or movies. Now, uh, as today, we are going to talk about some expressions related to sleep. Now, does any one of you know how to say dormir como un tronco? Ay, mi muchachito, man. Sleep deeply, I don't know. Sleep deeply. Okay, let me, let me write that down. And let me write what Arriving said. He said, sleep deeply. Do you guys think that that will be like dormir como un tronco? Like, no, it's like dormir profundamente. Profundamente. Dormir yeah, that's not dormir como un tronco. So, does any one of you know how do we say that? Uh, literally, um, sleep like uh, low. That's not literally. That's the way we say it in English. But the but... definition that the Google say. <laughs> Stop using, stop using Google. <laughs> okay. Sleep like a log. That's how we say it. Sleep like a log. Okay. So whenever you want to say, oh my God, this person sleeps like a log. You see, you can even use that expression or that little sentence or uh, like in, a, in an expression. For example, if I want to say like, oh, you know what? Rosemary, she sleeps. Uh, she she sleeps like a log. Rosemary duerme como un tronco. What does it mean? That she, she, that she sleeps and nobody can wake her up. Did you listen to the, to the mispronunciation? Mm, miss her up. What? Miss her up. Miss her up. Did I say that? Mm. Okay, active listening, guys. Active listening. Imagine, let's suppose that you don't want to work at a call center, but you have an opportunity to be the translator of your family. Why? Because if you're learning English, Salvadorian families, what do they tell you? Oh, he speaks English, so he can translate for us. Don't they say that? Has that happened to you? That happens. Why? Because your families, they know that, you're speak, that you speak English. So they think that you can translate. Okay? <laughs> so pay active listening to what the person is saying. Otherwise, you will not translate that correctly. Okay? Now, let's move on to another part. How do we say, guys, and let me listen, uh, like, Dormir bien por toda una noche. If, if I want to say like, uh, ay, dormí bien toda la noche. Sleep very good at night. Sleep very good at night. Okay, that's understandable. That's pretty understandable. I don't want to say yeah. it's, it's not okay because an American will understand it. But they will understand it because they will try to understand what you're saying, but it's not necessary 
correct what you're saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I does anyone know how to say that? Mm -hmm. Uh, Maybe good night. Sleep. sleep well all night. Well all night? No. You were pretty close, Arturo. What do you say? A good night sleep. A good night sleep. You're pretty close. So in English we say let's let me give you an example and let me share my screen once again. So if I want to say, oh dormi super super bien. I got a good night's night little nights like this night mm -hmm. slip. Hmm. I got a good night slips. You see, good. I got a good night slip. Now, if I want to say, uh. Yo he tenido una buena noche. That's a different tense. Mm -hmm. How do we say that? I've got a good night. I've got a good night. I I have. I have. I've. I. I've. I've got a good I night. Got, I've got, got or got I've gotten. I've, I've gotten. gotten. <laughs> oh my lord, Jesus Christ. I have a gotten. I'm trying to remember a lot of rules, teacher. <laughs> you see, today is the opportunity where we can all fail and learn from mistakes. That's why we're doing that, okay? But I really appreciate, guys, that you are participating in that way. We all know that what we're saying is not necessarily correct. Okay, that's really good. So that's what I want you to do. Participate. Even though it's not correct, we are going to try to correct it in here. Okay, that's what we're trying to do. Now, let me go back and let's see. How do we say, guys, um, sueño ligero? Mm. Soft, soft sleep, soft sleep. What, what was that? Soft sleep. Light sleep. Light sleep. Correct. Like a uh, light sleep. Now, how do we say, uh, for example, uh, sueño pesado? Hard sleep. What? Hard sleep. Heavy sleep. Heavy. Okay, guys, we don't say heavy, heavy. okay? We say heavy. Heavy, heavy sleep. Okay, heavy sleep. <laughs> Jesus Christ, today I'm, I'm just checking around. <laughs> I'm just checking. Be ready for Thursday. Remember, on Thursday is going to be pronunciation. It's going to be our last class in our last exam so participate now participate today or participate tomorrow in that way you get better you get ready for that okay now once again como decimos sueño ligero light sleep light sleep how do we say uh, sueño profundo heavy sleep. Heavy sleep. what was that Heavy, heavy, sleep. heavy, heavy, okay, heavy sleep, okay, like my ears, mis, ya mis oídos están acostumbrados que escucho un error, just automáticamente, my mind is like, <laughs> even though you're, you're talking, uh, like, most of you are talking, it's like, oh, that was you, but that's something that, that we, that you guys will do it, I'm pretty sure, I know that you all are smart, Todos son inteligentes, chicos. Si no, no hubiesen llegado hasta este momento. Believe me. I know, I trust you all. Confío en todos. Sé que lo pueden hacer. I know that you can do it better. That you can improve. And I have seen, I've, I have checked that some of you are really trying to do that. And I really appreciate that. So, uh, if you have more classes with me, 
all classes, my classes are pretty much the same. Even though you're basic, even though you're intermediate uh, uh, level, or if you're advanced, I will ask you more. Why? Because the more, the better. Yeah? So it's like, uh, feel free to participate, make mistakes, that's how we learn. Now, let's let's go back. And how would you say, guys, dormir profundamente? Um, deep sleep. As, sleep lap alone. As a raving cell teacher? Uh-huh. Sleep, uh, sleep, deeply? sleep. Deeply, or we can also use sleep heavily, okay? Either um, way, either way, both of them. Now, Iris, I heard that you said sleep like a long. Okay, it makes sense. Tiene sentido en Spanish, okay? Cuando decimos dormir profundamente, en Spanish, we use, usamos esa expresión dormir como un tronco. But in English, that's not... Mm, that's not exactly as in Spanish. But I understood, si entendí tu idea. Okay, but let's not get confused on that, okay? Now, let's move on and let's try to say, um, for example, um, how do you say oh, when someone, uh, cuando alguien habla, dormido? For example, I want to say, yo quiero decir, Alejandro habló cuando estaba dormido. Alejandro thought uh oh, talk when when he sleep mm -hmm. spark he can't he sleep while spoke. sleeping <clears throat> okay we have so many options and let's this call let's discuss the first one so Alejandro you said talk what when he was uh, Sleeping, but when he was sleeping, now that sounds literal translation from Spanish to English. El habló cuando estaba dormido, so that's what we're saying, translating word by word. Mm -hmm. So in English, we say something like this, and let me let me share my screen so you can write it down in case you're writing it down. In case you're not, that's okay. So we say, for example, I will use Alejandro. Sorry, Alejandro. Um, I'm using you as an example, Alejandro. Talk asleep. Mm. 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 Oh, sorry, I said Alen, so sorry about that. Now, that's, that's in past, because the verb talk is in past. Como decimos, hablo en pasado. Talk. What? Hmm. Let me listen to you, uh, Rosemary. How do we say hablo? This one right here. Talk. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, let me listen to you, Nadia. Talk. Aha, uh -huh. Maritza. Talk. Wendy. Talked. Talked. Exactly. That's how we say it. So we say Alejandro talked in his sleep. So when we say that, we're saying Alejandro habló cuando estaba dormido. So even though, even though the translation in Spanish does not make sense, because if we want to translate this, Word by word, it wouldn't make too much of a sense, right? Because we would say Alejandro habló en su sueño. It makes a little, a little sense, a little, when we translate into Spanish. But as I told you before, some expressions are not necessarily translated literally. Know what I mean? So that's, those are things that we always have to pay attention to. Uh, now, let me stop sharing this in here, and let's go with the next one. How do we say, um, alguien da vuelta en la cama? Uh, 
Ajá. Someone is rolling in the bed. Rolling in the bed. Eso sería como hmm. rodar en la cama. Hmm. Um, can be he turned he turns in bed. Okay, let me write that down. So we say toss and turn. Toss and turn. Toss and turn. Okay, for example, let's say I'm gonna say um Wendy se mueve en la cama, like she toss and turn. You know, she toss and turn. So we're automatically saying or we understand. Que ella es, como le decimos en salvadoreño, loca para dormir. <laughs> yeah, that's how we say it. In la I... traducción directa a español. La... What do you Let's mean? Toss and turn. Dar, toss and turn. Dar vueltas en la cama. Toss and toss turn. Toss and turn, yeah. Yeah, that's not make okay. sense at all. Oh, why, why, what you mean? Toss and turn. You mean? I mean. What does toss mean? Toss. It's pretty much like you make a circle. You move from different directions, like from here to here. That's toss and turn because obviously turn. Um, en español sería como que se va y se viene. Right? Turn es como que retorna en este caso. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty much. It's like. Uh, it's, uh, let's say, uh, it's not a literal thing or something literal that we are translating. And that's why sometimes English gets like a little tricky because it's like, oh my God, too many expressions that we do not know or that we are not related to. But this is the time where we can learn some of them. What, what I really recommend you guys is that Whenever you do not understand something, try to apply it to your life. What does it mean? For example, let's suppose that you have a family or, or a relative or someone who does these actions. So try to think in your mind and say like, oh, you know, she tossed and turned. If I say she tossed, will that be correct? If I'm talking like in present. What do you guys think? Teacher, what I what I'm not getting is mm -hmm. for uh, for example when I want to say ella es loca para dormir, I have to say she she's toss and turn. She toss and turn. Ah, without the verb to be. She yeah, touched she, and turned. Yeah, because she is, uh, ella, ella is, no, that doesn't make sense. Not at all. We're not using Just, the verb to be, yeah. She touched and turned. Okay. Now, that's what I was okay. saying. It, if I'm talking in present, will that be correct if I say she tossed and turned? She's tossing and turned. Tossing and turned. So uh she remembered that when we're talking in third person, what do we do? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so uh, we uh, say uh, she tosses in turn if we are talking in present. Toss and turn is just a general idea, but then you know <laughs> that that we can conjugate it by different tenses that we have in English. We uh, add the e, 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 S, e S just in the first, in the first. Just in verb. the first and not in the second one. Mm -hmm. Okay, tosses and turn. Tosses and turn, correct. Uh, in this case, we cannot use auxiliaries to talk in the past. Uh, what do you mean, like auxiliaries? Uh, what type of auxiliaries uh, you mean? If we... Um, talking, uh, so if you want, if you want, oh, she, for example, she didn't touch and turn. Did, uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's an auxiliary, but then it will be in past. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. she didn't. She didn't toss mm -hmm. and turn. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. That looks like today is too much of information for you guys. <laughs> is it right? Too much information for one, just for one hour. Um, teacher. Um, yeah. And if you can help us uh, sending a lot of, of um, these idioms. Mm -hmm. Well, this is these are not necessarily idioms. These are expressions mm -hmm. that yeah. are already used in the English language. But since we are learning, we do not know them. And what we do is do, do our best and try to translate them literally. That's what we do. But these are not necessarily uh, idioms. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Well, I hope so. I, I see too many faces of confusion today. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I don't know if you are, if you are regretting today's class. I really don't know. <laughs> Sorry, teacher, but in my house, it's raining a lot. It's raining. Yeah, I completely understand. Here so it's I raining. I, I didn't listen to that, what you said. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know it's raining in most part of El Salvador, in some parts, actually. But here where I live, it's raining as well. But what I was saying, guys, is that um, even though I know that some cases or some things are going to be a little bit difficult for you, I really wish you the best. So um, I hope that after this module, I hope that you uh, you all have learned a little bit more of what you already knew. So you're going a little more prepared for the next module. Um, well, that's pretty much, or that's what I expect, uh, like to make an impact on you. Now, for example, how do we say no puedo conciliar el sueño? I can, I sleep, can very sleep very well. Okay, that's yeah. that's no puedo dormir. What you said is no puedo dormir. But if I, I can't want fair, uh, fall asleep. I can fall asleep. That's pretty much the same as como no me puedo dormir. Mm. But if I want to say no puedo conciliar el sueño. We say, I can't, I can't get, I can get to sleep. I can get to sleep. So write that down if you think that you are going to forget that. Teacher, if, if, if we say, I can get fall asleep. I can get fall asleep. No, we cannot no. say that. Why? Because you're already using get. And as you know, get can be using a variety of uh of uh, you know um, forms let's say get is the only verb that it can have like a very complex translation for example if you say get dress what's that vestirse vestirse uh -huh. you see so it's a very very complex one so remember if you want to say no puedo conciliar in this case if you want to say no pude conciliar el sueño ayer i couldn't get to excellent sleep. i couldn't get to sleep why couldn't por qué lo cambiamos a couldn't y ya no usamos can't alguien me puede decir because we are we're talking about the past. past. Because we're talking about the past. And in past, we use couldn't. Exactly. That was pretty good. Pretty good catch. That was good. Now, um, this one is very easy. Sonambulo. Mm. Sleepless. Sleepless? No, that's not sonambulo. No. Sleepwalk? Sleep. Sleepwalker? Sleepwalker, excellent. That's how we say that. Sleepwalker. Do you know how to how to write it? Si saben cómo se escribe? The others? Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes. Okay. W A L 
W. Like the verb walk. Yeah, like the verb walk. All together. Sleepwalker. Ah, together. Yeah, together. Not separate. It's only one word. One word, yeah. Le llamamos a eso compound words. Palabra compuesta. So, for example, let's say that we want to say eraibin es un sonámbulo. How would you say, how would you say that? Eraibin is a sleepwalker. In that case, we're using the verb to be and we're saying eraibin mm -hmm. is a sleepwalker. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Es un sonámbulo. Now, one, the last one, which is going to be very easy. Uh, see, if we want to say, no he podido pegar un ojo en la noche. I I couldn't sleep. You're there? All night. I couldn't sleep all night. Eso es, no pude dormir toda la noche, literally. But it's understandable. It's understandable. I, what, I, what I really want you to understand, guys, in English, there's two ways. Hay dos formas. La forma en que usted suena como un nativo, hablando con frases nativas, Y la forma en la que usted suena como una persona que aprendió el idioma ya que no fue su lengua natal. Si usted dice, I couldn't sleep, what, what do you I say? All night, is that, is that what you said? I couldn't sleep all night. So all if night. you say that, that's okay. They will understand that. Sí, lo van a entender, pero ellos van a saber que usted no es nativo del idioma. Why? Usted está, usted aprendió y por lo tanto usted se da a entender. It's understandable. No estoy diciendo que está incorrecto decir, I couldn't sleep all night. That's correct. But if you want to sound as a native speaker of the language, si usted quiere sonar como un nativo del idioma, usted va a decir, no pude pegar un ojo ayer. How do we say? I couldn't sleep a wink. A wink. No, let me write that down. Wink like guiño. Exactly. <laughs> then, but let me write it. Let me write that down. So, I don't know this. No. I couldn't. Oh. Slip a wink. Awake. Wink. A wink. Wink. A wink. Mm -hmm. So you said, oh, you know what? I couldn't sleep a wink. So automatically, usted le está diciendo a la otra persona, no pegué ni un ojo. You see, I couldn't sleep a wink yesterday. Y si le agregamos la palabra yesterday, todavía estamos enfatizando more. We're emphasizing a little bit more. You see? The, 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 it was the, the last night. Yeah, that you're emphasizing that you couldn't sleep like, like literally last night or the previous night. So uh, I hope guys that we could learn today a little bit more of, you know, these not common expressions. And as I told you before, I really want you to, you know, to succeed in the English language. I'm pretty sure. A lot sure. of new things to remember, teacher. I know, I know. <laughs> a lot of new things. Yeah, I am... But you will do it. You know, it's like once you, mem like, no memorize them, but you practice them, like, in your daily basis. Like, even though, what I want you to, to do, guys, is, like, try to practice even though the person you're talking to does not speak Spanish, like English, I mean. Because I remember my mother, I used to tell her expression in English, and she was like, please don't talk to me in English. We don't speak English in this house. Like, we speak Spanish. But I was like, oh, you know what? I'm practicing. I'm practicing. So every single time that you have the opportunity of doing that, try to do it, okay? If you have someone, like, around the, the city or someone who you can have a small conversation with, try to do it. That's one of the tips that I can tell you, okay? That's that's pretty much it. So any question before we go, guys? 
um, not for me, no question, teacher. No questions. Okay. So once again, what's my pleasure for you, uh, like for me to be here in this case, and uh, hope to learn some expressions today. And remember, do not hesitate to ask. If after the class you want to ask me a question regarding to anything, I am there to help you out, okay? I'm not a strict person, like I'm not a strict teacher. I always like to help my students. Why? I put myself on your feet. Why? Because once I was in the same situation, I was in the same place, uh, place as yours. So I completely understand. So, uh, well, I speak to like three languages now, Spanish, English, and French. If I did it, guys, why not you? Okay, that's what, what, what the only thing I want to tell you, okay? So, to never give up on what we're doing. So, try to do it, to practice every single day. And uh, let's see, someone. I was thinking, of, oh, my God. You see what Daisy said on the chat? She said, yes. I couldn't. I couldn't sleep a wink yesterday because I was thinking of you. That's for someone who is in love, right? Who is a very romantic person. That's what someone would say. But, well, anyway, guys, thank you very much for being here today, for attending to the class. Even though it's raining in some parts of El Salvador, I really appreciate that. And I will see you guys tomorrow at the same time, okay? And please keep working on that pronunciation. Remember on Thursday, we have the exam and that's gonna be oral exam, okay? So please, so I will see you all guys tomorrow at the same time and have a good night, okay? Teacher, well, teacher, yeah. teacher. Yeah, 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 what? Teacher, where do you learn to speak English? Uh, well, in my case, uh, uh, my father taught me since I was three years old, because my father, he lived in Belize. So uh, when I was a child, he taught me. But, you know, like I grew up learning Spanish uh, and speaking Spanish and English at the same time. But uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I I completely understand. I, I learned uh, French from scratch. So I can give you like some things. <laughs> That where you can, you know, improve because I didn't know French. So I did the same thing you're doing now with English. But in my case, English was like my second language. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yes. So, yeah. Okay. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.